Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. Today you catch up with us on a new lake and it's a canal style lake or a snake lake. Now we've had a few requests to do a video on a canal and snake lake on still waters so that's what we're down here today to try and show you how to do. Now obviously with a canal it is exactly what it says, it's a relatively short bit of water now. We've got 14 and a half metres right over to the far side. So you're really limited into what you can do with your peg. You haven't got much water, especially if you're in a match and you've got people either side of you. Now luckily we haven't got that today, but what I'm going to try and show you is how I would attack a canal or a snake lake where you haven't got much water, because there is a definite way you can get the most out of, the, out of your peg. And obviously not having much water is quite easy just to spook everything out of it and you find yourself catching for a half an hour to an hour and then you struggle for the rest of the match. So hopefully we'll, a couple of little tips and be able to show you how to do that. Now to start with, basically the method attack is quite self-explanatory and probably most people would do it generally anyway. You've been setting up most of the commotion going on here, you're going to start over the far side so that's where we're going to start. But with canals or snake lakes you tend to have three lines, so you'd have your one over the far side, you one down the track and then you one on your edge which you'd hope to be fishing later on. Like I said, down the track is always a great place because you normally find they've been dug out with diggers and they go like that, with like the deepest point would be in the middle, so most of the bait would either roll and settle naturally in that channel. So when times are hard, that's a good little place to fish on a canal. But to start with, we're going to start right over, but before we do that, we want to try and get a couple of swims going. So I'm just going to put a ball of ground bait down the track, as I would say, like in the middle of it. We've had a plumb around and it's deepest right in the middle, so it does look like it's just been dug out with a digger arm, so right in the middle I'm just going to put one ball of ground bait and it is generally only going to be one ball to try and keep that out of the way of where else we're fishing. One last thing to mention where I'm potting it, I am potting it not straight in front of me, you're going to be playing fish and so you haven't got much water, try and get it away from things, try and get it where you can sort of sneak it aside, almost rest it, that's going to sit there now quietly while we're fishing over the far side. So. I'll just quickly bring that back and show you the rig. Now the rig, relatively simple, over the far side, it's not very deep, we've got about 3 foot 018 G line, Preston Durafloat 10, 4 by 14 and the shot and pattern is just a bulk of number 8 with one number 9 relatively about 3 or 4 inches away from the hook, relatively close just to try and get that bait down there. And what I'm going to do starting over there, I'm not going to pot in like I have done there, we want to rest that, that one we've just potted, over the far side, I've got a little toss spot on the end here, and it's just going to be starting with that, just a little toss spot and you feel your way into it, you don't want to be putting big balls of baits everywhere and spooking fish off. And last thing to mention, Elastic Choices White Hydro, really soft, the reason for that is they can't really go anywhere, there's not any snags, I mean they've got a corner and they've got the rest of the canal, they can swim up and down as much as they like, they're not going to hit me in some lilies or under some trees so that's one thing I would probably say fishing these on like it's fish light there's no need to fish heavy because the fish just can't go in it they can just swim up and down as they please so what we'll do is we'll slip a bait on I'm going to start with just a six mil pellet and then in that toss pot I've just got some red krill micro pellets that I've soaked I'm just going to cap it with some ground bait we haven't got the best fishing conditions today it's quite windy so I'm just going to drop it drop a cap of ground bait on there so it's easier to ship out, you don't want things bouncing off the rollers and putting feed all over your swim. So we're going right over this time. And then the last one that we said, fishing down the edge, we'll explain as the session goes on. You don't want to be feeding that too early. So we'll explain more as we go on, but for now let's see if we can get an early fish on camera. So we're going over to the far side, cut that bait out and we're fishing. Right, the rig's settled in there nicely now. One thing you may have noticed, I haven't gone right over to the far side and there is thought process behind that. In the fact that I said it's very easy to, to start catching really quick here, most people would go right over the far side, catch really, really quick and then they'd find the fish had spooked. Now what would be that is the fish would be right over the far side and as you catch them they go left and right and spook either way because they don't want to be caught. So basically what I do by fishing a foot, two foot away from the bank is hopefully you can pick a few fish up there 
and then they've actually got somewhere to back off you and you'll find that after catching five or six fish maybe they will back off and then you'll have to catch them over the far side but because they feel like they've moved and backed somewhere you tend to find they stay there for longer and you can start catching fish for a longer period of time than the people either side of you so don't always be desperate to go right over the far side even though you know probably naturally that's where you're going to be catching fish from so that's one tip to start with to try and get a little bit more action out of your peg it's very very windy it's quite hard to hold my pole still and you probably see as well it's very awkward to ship out We've got an awkward bank behind us so it's not the easiest of conditions but We've had a couple of little bites. I don't think it'll be too long for into a fish. And there we are. A couple of bubbles came up. A few little liners and stuff like that. We don't need to strike at. Wait for that positive bite. And now this is what I was saying, using the white hydro, I haven't got to do nothing now. It can go wherever it wants. There's nowhere it can snag me. So I'll just take my time. It's just wallowing around. It's got a puller on it, so if I need to, when I get a bit closer, I choose to pull a bit to get it under control under my feet. Got quite a long land that handle on today because we are sitting quite high from the water, that's the only thing. Just trying to go down the edge, but choose that puller. It's a nice little common. The net got a bit blown away in the wind. Nearly ready. And he's ours. Sit that hook out. We'll have a quick look at him. There we are, not a bad start. Like I said, literally just that toss spot puller bait to start with. Catch a few fish a couple of foot away and then you'll probably move over. The wind's really picking up now. But let's slip him back and get another bait out there. But a lovely common to start with. See if we can get back out there and have another one. This wind lets me get the pole out there, that is. But I mean, that's what we're going to try and continue to do for a while now. Is you, you're going to be catching, hopefully, anyway, the majority of your fish over on the far side. So. We'll plug away, keep doing that. Now, I wouldn't touch where you put that ball of ground bait. I'd leave that really quiet because you don't know how many fish you're going to catch. I mean, I know there's a lot of fish in this lake, but not all lakes are exactly the same. So I normally find if, I'm, if I have to fish down the track, you're not looking for a big weight. It's not going to be a big weight day. So most of your weight, hopefully, is going to be catching over the far side. And realistically, I mean, if you're in for a real big weight and there is a good stock in the fish, You'd probably be looking to catch shallow over the far side. And I have got a rig behind me set up, which we might use later, and you'll be catching fish over the far side, but only a couple of inches, three, four inches deep. And then you're in for a serious weight. But for now, 80% of the time, this is what I'd start on. And I'd be trying to catch as many fish as I can on this line, a couple of foot away from the far bank until it died off. And then you'd start to move about. I mean, if it doesn't die off, you've not really got any reason to change until really late on when the fish will be more willing to come on your far near side, sorry. So then you haven't got a ship so far if you pole. But just going back over there again. And it's just a case of repeating the same process. Pick the marker on the far side, empty your toss spot out, and then just let that rig settle again. Hopefully it won't be too long. a nice steady run of fish together now over on that far side and as yet they haven't backed away from us I mean it, it probably does help that I'm the only one fishing so maybe if there was more other people fishing they'd be a bit more wary 
just missed another bite. It'd be a bit wary and they'd start to back off towards that bank and go from left to right. So I am a bit lucky in that aspect, but at the moment it's been really, really good. As soon as I put the float in, getting all sorts of liners and it's not taken very long at all to get a bite. The hardest bit is actually trying to keep it still in this, in this wind. There's plenty of fish over there. I've seen a couple of little bubbles on that ball of ground that I put out there as well. So hopefully there's a few fish on there. We will switch to that in a minute. Just see if we can catch a couple more out here. There's a lot of fish out there at the moment. Another bite missed. Try not to strike everything. When you are fishing shallow water over a far side, you get a lot of liners. So try and wait until it really does give you a proper bite. And don't get me wrong, you're not going to connect with everything, but it will save you foul hooking fish all over the place if you're hitting tiny little knocks because you're going to get them when you've got a lot of fish in your peg. There we are, there's another fish. Just slowly guide them away from that far bank. And then we can let the elastic do the rest. I'm getting an awful lot of signs and indications now that, that those fish want to come shallow. And if I was in a match situation and I was trying to put a really big weight together, I would have already had that rig on. Fish in three or four inches deep, pick the catapult up and fire either six or eight mil pellets over that far side. And then you would be in for serious weight of fish. But you're not always going to have that luxury, so we've done plenty of videos before on how to, to fish shallow effectively. So if you haven't seen them, then check on the channel for other videos on shallow fishing, and I would be doing that over that far side. But for now, we're putting a real steady run of fish together like this. Now, this is what I was saying about earlier when I've cupped that track line is to my right. All my fish, and I've purposely done it, I've been played to my left. So throughout the time we've been fishing, there's not been a fish go through that and disturb it. That is quite important. This one's on a real mission though. Just hold him out there. Well, we're slowly eased him back. Was putting up a good scrap right in the middle there, but I can see why he is a bigger fish. And you do normally find that you catch a smaller fish to start with. And then as those bigger fish see, feeding, competition, they're in, they're pushing them out and you start catching bigger fish. You can expect to catch even bigger fish on your edge late on, which hopefully we'll be able to show you. But for now I'm just going to concentrate on this one, use that puller. There's plenty of elastic out still, but it does look like a nice fish. There he is, he's ours. He didn't want to come in, I'm just going to step down here. It's a bit of a nasty slope for him to come up. But that is a cracking fish. Nicely hooked in the top lip. And you really don't need many of these to put away together. If he's going to behave himself, we'll hold him up. Check that out for a fish. Those are the fish you're looking for. Coming in, pushing the smaller fish out. Brilliant fun. But we'll get him slipped back and then we'll change it for you. What a fish. Well, he's gone away nicely. Now's a great time, like we said, to just move on. And we have got a rig already plumbed up to fishing down the track. But if we just briefly summarize of what we've done, is like I said, we'll start two feet away from the bank. If you need to, chase them closer, go left and right so you can keep fish coming. Now, you don't really want to be fishing down the track if you're trying to do a big weight, but it is a good way of catching the odd extra fish if you're struggling. So, I fed it earlier. We haven't touched it since that we initially put that feed in. And I would say this is probably the hardest way or the hardest method to fish on a canal is down the track because it's really tough to decide what you want to do. Now, I'm not going to put any bait originally. I want to go over it and see if there's anything there. We've been left quiet. I want to see if there's any fish there sitting on that spot 
that's just been confidently feeding on that bait for a few hours. So I'll just have a little look in it and then really you just need to decide yourself if you feel that it needs a bit more bait or less bait. And that's what I say boy, it's the trickiest place to fish because you never quite know how to feed it until you feel your way into it. So the best way is always start light because you can always add it. You can't ever take it away, but you can always add it. So we'll give it a couple of minutes without putting any bait in. If we're not catching like that, we'll then put the toss pot back on and we'll see if we can just slowly trick a little bit of bait in there to encourage them to come back over where they were feeding earlier if they indeed were feeding there. So, like I said, this isn't where you're looking for your massive weight. This is where you're looking to catch in them slow periods. Oh, there we go. And there's the fish on. So like I said, he was probably sitting there for a while, happily feeding away. And I mean, even if they did clear all the bait you put there earlier, I know I put a big ball of ground bait in there, but if they did clear all that, fish know, I mean, they remember, they, he would have been well aware that they were feeding with no disturbance for a while and they'll just keep trickling back there see if there's any more any more bait going in until you start spooking them they don't really have any reason to move on so let's just see if we can get this one in it's a nice fish I said slightly deeper water down the middle probably where you catch a lot of your fish in the winter months Well, there we are. That's what we sort of would class as the bonus fish. And when times are hard, or as I said, certainly in winter, them fish down the track can be an absolute godsend if all else fails. Get the confidence up and then see what's there. Let's slip him back and see if there's another one waiting. There we are. Right, now this is what I was saying about this is the hardest bit. You've just had a fish off there. Do you bait it or do you not? And I suppose it's a million dollar question. There is no right or wrong answer. Sometimes you put a bit of bait in, you don't catch another fish there. And other times you work out too late that they want a little bit trickled in all the while. So I suppose what I would say is, what I am gonna do is go in there again with no bait, but if I need to, I'll then put the toss bar on. I won't wait too long before starting to trickle a little bit of bait in there. What I am going to do as well, I'm just going to slowly trickle some bait down the margins because what I'm trying to do today is emulate to you what I would do in a match situation. So, although we're not fishing for five hours today, probably if we were solid match time, you'd start just throwing a bit of bait down to one side or both sides if you've got two good margins but you probably wouldn't do that until you'd fished a good, let's say two hours. So two and a half hours, halfway through the match, just every now and again, just try and remind yourself, like every time you, you get a fish, every time you get a bite, just a few freebies down there to keep that bait going in. And down there, I would keep putting it in. I'd keep trickling down because you wanna, you wanna make that noise. You wanna make it as if you're packing up. And that's why you tend to do it a bit later because the fish have been fished for, they're wary, they hear bait going in down that edge and they think it's the end, they think it's time to start feeding and they start to get a bit of confidence. And the good thing is down the edge, it's always really shallow, so, well not always I shouldn't say, but most of the time it's really shallow. So you can pop down there, just keep looking, see if there's any tails up there and then you know you can start fishing for them. So what we'll do is we'll just fish away here for a little bit longer, keep throwing bait down there and then we'll hopefully end up there in a moment. I'm just going to give this a few minutes on this line to see if there is a meal, more fish there. If not, we'll start putting a little bit of bait in there as well. seems to be that the fish don't want to be down that middle today. Like I said, it's not always the best 
the best place to catch them. So we'll get rid of that top kick. So I've been feeding down the edge there. And I don't know if you can see on camera, but there's a lot of fish there. There's quite a few tails up. And I've seen a, the odd decent fish down there. So I'm going to go down there. Like I said, you are really looking for some bonus fish down there. But the rig we're using is pretty much nothing complicated. Slightly heavier elastic. Same line, 018. Never break it. And then I've just got a tiny little dibber float. These are normally up in the water floats, but because it is so shallow down there, I'm just going to use one of my upper water rigs. And again, we're on a banded pallet. So, like I said, we've been feeding that for a while. Plenty of competition down there. What I'll do is I'll slip a pellet on, see if we can catch one from down there. This shouldn't take long, hopefully. Well, that was hopefully visible for you on the camera, but that float literally went in and went straight under like it was overshotted. There is so many fish down there. Just once you get them like that down the edge, there's no need to do anything else if you're after a big weight of fish. It really is a brilliant way of catching them. You're catching them close, so you don't always take ages shipping your pole out and stuff like that. But probably am going to call this one the last fish. We've shown you basically not the correct way, but my way. There's no correct way of doing it in fishing, but my way of fishing canals or snake lakes with the three different stages. Like I said, you, majority of your weight is over. Bonus fish if you can down the middle. And then the last hour, two hours, once you've got them confident, you're looking to catch them under your feet. And that's the way I would attack most canals unless I find anything else out that works specifically for, for that particular canal or snake lake. But in general, what I've fished today is in my opinion the best way to tackle them so let's have a look at him there we are nice edge fish beautiful common and a great way to end hopefully another enjoyable video i'm probably going to stay on and catch a few more can't resist seeing that many tails come up but that's it from us in this episode thanks for watching we hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you again on the next one.